Hello, my name is Naprav. Welcome to the video. This is going to be a comprehensive guide on Oxbridge interviews and is meant for prospective applicants and also people who have the interview coming up soon this year. I'll first introduce myself. My name is Naprav and I am currently a third year undergraduate at Homerton College, Cambridge, studying natural sciences. I applied for natural sciences three years ago through the physical route, so back in December 2017. In this video, I will also be giving my own personal experience and anecdotes from that time. So as this video will have many sections, which I will put here, I will be putting timestamps in the description box below, so please feel free to skip to the section that you feel is most useful for you. Firstly, I would just like to give a disclaimer that although I've tried to include all the correct and necessary information in this video, I may have missed out something or gotten something incorrect, so please feel free to check with the official websites. Secondly, the personal information I give in this video is just from one single Cambridge student, so please use your own judgment in thinking about how much you want to take it into account in your own preparation. So let's get started. There are quite a few myths about the Oxbridge interview. For example, the interview is the only part of the application that matters. The interview is designed as a test of your knowledge. Successful applicants get everything right, or alternatively, the people who are successful are the people who feel like they haven't done well at all. Fourthly, they will ask like these obscure and random questions like do animals have stripes or describe this rock? Or and in addressing the final myth, those actually are real interview questions, but they aren't really as obscure as they seem. It depends on the subjects that you are applying for and also your interests that you might have written down in your personal statement. For example, a student applying for biology might have gotten the question about um, whether tigers have stripes. That would seem like an obscure question to somebody who's like studying law maybe and then they suddenly get a question about tigers and stripes. So despite these myths, what actually is the real role of the interview? The answer is actually much, much more simple than that. They just want to assess whether you can study at Cambridge or not. They just want to see whether you will be able to learn in the Cambridge environment. Let me explain. Both Cambridge and Oxford have extremely fast-paced curriculums and they have very short and intense terms. In Oxford, they also have supervisions or tutorials, which is small group teaching between about three students and one supervisor or tutor. The interview takes on a somewhat similar format to these supervisions or tutorials and so essentially the role of the interview is to assess whether you are able to learn from and contribute to these supervisions slash tutorials. If we go to exactly what Oxbridge say they are looking for in their applicants, both of them say they are looking for the ability to think that is analyze, problem solve, process information. They also want to see whether you have enthusiasm and a willingness to learn for your subject. As a former interviewee, I'm going to explain how you can sort of do that and what exactly it means. In interviews, when you are given a question, it's often one where you can't give the answer straight away. The important thing here is to talk through your thoughts so you can show them your thought process and that you are actually thinking. I would go even as far to say that getting the question right is actually a bonus and not what they are actually looking for. Also, if you are deliberating between two different approaches or something like that, you can voice out both and give justification. If you are stuck on a question, start off with like one section of the question and just like base it on something that you already know, you have already learned and then from that you can start building on it. I'd also advise that you should be honest and sincere in your approach. If you don't know something, it's not necessary to bluff or pretend you know it when you don't because they can see through it anyway, so there's no point. And also, it's not about showing how much knowledge you have or how much extra reading you have done. You just have to show a willingness to learn. Firstly, there are questions about your personal statement, questions about why you want to study this subject, and also things like why Cambridge or why did you choose this college. For questions concerning your personal statement, it's necessary to make sure that you remember everything in your personal statement, what you wrote about, and what, like, if you expressed interest in something, make sure that you can say a few things about it. 
for questions concerning like why you might be interested in applying to somewhere, um, it's nice and beneficial if you give a good answer, but these aren't really the determining factors for whether you will get in or not. It's more just like some questions they ask at the beginning to, you know, make conversation and guide you into the interview. Also, interviewers will usually ask if you have any questions at the end of the interview. It's not necessary to ask a question if you don't actually have a question, but if you do, then maybe this is something that you could prepare. So generally, a good method of preparing for your interview is to do example questions, example interview questions, which you can find if you search uh, on Google, or to do mock interviews with teachers. So personally, in my application for Physical and Natural Sciences, before the interview, I also prepared specifically for some questions that come up commonly, such as graph sketching and also deriving things from first principles. Though, for example, you might be asked to sketch a graph, which is like, what, uh, what does y is equal to 1 over sine x look like? I also tried to look over my notes as much as possible to revise AS level content and also what I had previously learned in year 13. This was just to make sure that everything was fresh in my mind. Okay, so in this section, I'm going to be talking about my own personal interview experience for natural sciences through the physical route. So you can understand my application as a whole. I will give a very quick summary of my profile. So I applied as an international student from a school in Thailand and I flew to the UK for an interview in person at Homerton College. My grades at IGCSD were 9 A stars and 1 A. Predicted grades at A level were 4 A stars and an A star for EPQ, which is the Extended Project Qualification. From my results in first year, I won't be talking about second year because everything was online. I was basically just, you know, a average median Cambridge student. So, average Cambridge student. Okay, now that the very fast introduction is over, I will be now talking about my own interview experience. I will just be giving an overview of the topics and the types of questions that I was asked. So I had two interviews, both of which were, I think, about 20 to 30 minutes each. Both of them were in the morning on the same day with about an hour in between the interviews. My first interview had two interviewers. I don't know why I'm giving a description, but just so you can see the picture. And I went in and there was like this table. They were sitting on one side and I was sitting on the other. The questions I was asked in the first interview were based on maths and physics. They were all related to mechanics in that interview. So I was asked questions about projectile motion. The first few questions were like basic questions that were easy to answer. Then later on, they showed me this diagram. As I figured out one part, they would continually add on a next part that made it more complicated. In this interview, what I noticed was that they left kind of a gap for me to think about it by myself and didn't really intervene if I was doing something wrong. I didn't end up getting it correct. I know this because they asked me to check. So by finding the base units of the answer, I was able to figure out that my answer was wrong, but then they were like, Time's up! So, at the end of the interview, they also asked if I had any questions. My second interview was Maths and Chemistry. It was two interviewers as well. In this one, they first asked me a few questions on my personal statement, so things that I mentioned in my personal statement. I was asked about the research topic of my extended project qualification, and then secondly, I was asked about one of the things I mentioned that I was interested in. After that, for the mass portion of the interview, I was asked to sketch a graph, which was something that I had already sort of prepared for. Then secondly, in the chemistry section of the interview, they asked me some questions on redox reactions, and then they asked me to sketch some graphs related to Gibbs free energy, which were fine. And so the second interview seemed to go better, as in I seemed to be able to answer more questions. In this interview, they were more liberal with giving hints, so as I started um, leaving a pause, they would introduce this hint. Okay, so that is the end of all the um, official and useful information that I have given in this video. Now moving on to give a more personal and anecdotal account of what happened. 
like I said, I was applying from Thailand, so I had to fly from Thailand to the UK as an international student to do my interview. Two main things went wrong. Firstly, on the flight there, the airline lost my luggage and it turned out that my suitcase had gone to Japan, even though with the rest of my family, all of their suitcases went to the UK and that meant I didn't have my clothes, I didn't have some of my notes that I was meant to revise from and I also didn't have contact lenses and so I had to wear glasses for my interview. It wasn't really a big deal but it was sort of like a sign that things were going to go wrong. But the main thing that went wrong was that I was actually very, very, very ill on the day of my interview. The evening before I felt fine but I woke up in like the middle of the night and I felt either really hot or really cold, I can't remember, but I think I was getting a fever and in the morning when I woke up I had like a headache, I felt uh, nauseous and so I thought like, is it just because I'm nervous that I just feel really terrible? But then, um, and so I was like, okay, I'll just take Tylenol and you know, just grit my teeth and bear it. And I remember going to my interview, it was on like the second floor and we had to walk up a flight of stairs um, and my head was just throbbing like, and like I could feel my pulse. I did consider whether I should just tell them that I didn't feel well and so maybe we could postpone the interview. But then because I already, I had flown there all the way from Thailand, which is like a um, eight hour flight. And so I felt pretty awful through both the first and second interview, you know, trying to answer these questions and show my enthusiasm and willingness for my subject while my head was being like, ugh. <laughs> Afterwards, when I got back to my family, I just got into bed and slept until the next morning. All my family members actually also became ill one by one, so it wasn't, it really wasn't just that I was nervous, I was actually sick. The day after, I decided to go to the doctor and get a note from the doctor that I had a fever and I sent an email to inform my college that I wasn't feeling that well on the day, attaching the note and also asked them to take it into their consideration of my application. They actually did reply to this and said they would, but I don't know how much they actually did. If I could give any advice from the last section of this video, I would say um, put all the important things in your carry-on luggage if you're flying to the UK as an international student or actually, you know, even if you're going traveling to Cambridge Take care of your health, even though I took vitamins and everything, but maybe I was just tired. Like, if you look in these photos, I look pretty tired. An email usually helps with a lot of situations. Communication is key. To be honest, I don't know why exactly I was a successful Oxbridge applicant in the interview process or just in general, um, but I hope this video was useful or insightful to you in some way, or at least if not, I hope it was entertaining. Please give it a like if you did find it useful. Leave a comment if you have any questions or anything that you would like me to elaborate on, and subscribe if you would like to see more videos from me. Thank you so much for watching this video. Bye.